Hello YouTube friends. I have a bit of an idea to do a little series, maybe more than one video, all about English paper piecing. Uh, because uh, over the years I've done quite a lot of, of that and I thought that it might be a nice idea to not just explain what it is, to show you some of the things that I've made, but maybe I was thinking if there are people who would like to join in with the project I'm doing, then maybe we could do that together uh, over the next um, few videos. I'm making a gift for a baby uh, who was born just before Christmas. And I've made this present for babies many, many, many times. This dog then, they often get called Patch. <laughs> This one is all made out of Liberty fabric and so each of these squares is hand stitched together and then the, these squares here go all the way around to give it uh, a 3D effect here. And so that one's mine, uh, it's just a cushion that sits in my bedroom. So it will, um, it's a dog isn't it, not a cat, interesting. So we'll sit you there patch although I did give one to a baby and the parents called it Tetris which I thought was quite a good name for it. Okay so this little baby that's just been born I'm going to make her um, an indigo dyed dog. It's up here. I've pinned it onto my design board just earlier on. Uh, I've probably put a little clip of, of that uh, in when I just pinned it up. Um, and uh, if you remember I made the quilt with the Merchant and Mills fabric uh, which was all that fantastic uh, Indian dyed indigo cotton. Well, I have a little bit of it left. Uh, not a lot, just that this is probably about it now because we made the quilt uh, that uh, got machine quilted. We made the quilt for Martha, uh, Anna's um, uh, mum. She made that quilt. And then these are the bits and pieces I have left. Now, we in the summer we did the indigo dyeing uh, all of us a whole group of us got together to dye a load of indigo fabric for this baby and the baby's grandma sewed it all into a beautiful quilt haven't got a picture of that unfortunately but i will try and get one while we're doing this series so i thought it might be quite appropriate if the little girl gets uh, one of my dogs but made out of indigo dyed fabric so I'm going to explain to you a little bit about what English paper piecing is. Forgive me if you already know and you've been doing this for years, but maybe people are curious about what it is. It's got a long history because, of course, before sewing machines, people were stitching fabric together uh, to, make, um, to make do uh, with all the scraps of fabric that they had uh, in a thrifty way. But then, of course, it became more decorative and people started to do it in a way that um, you know made beautiful patterns and so on. And we're just going to be concentrate on a simple square. Uh, that's all we're going to be doing because this guy is made up of 30 squares on one side, 30 on the other side, and I think it's 32 around the outside. So we, I think we need about 92 squares. I'm, I'm not sure about the extra two. It's definitely 90. And so I'm going to explain to you what we do. In order for the accuracy of this stitching then all of these little hand stitch pieces here we need to get some paper that's cut to exactly the size we need that's not the right size of course uh, these are an inch and three quarters i chose that size because it makes a nice sized dog this one here the squares on this dog are two inches and so it makes a slightly bigger dog. I've made them in all sizes. I've made them with four inch patches, a massive great big bean bag. I've made them with half inch patches, a little tiny dog, and I've made them everything in between. Uh, this is a nice size, the two inch, but I, th I decided to make this one for this baby just a tiny bit smaller. Inside here, to keep the fabric a really nice crisp shape, the paper template helps us to do that. And of course you can make that template any shape or size that you want. I'll be showing you some other patchwork that I've done in this series uh, with hexagons. That's a very, very common shape that people use to do English paper piecing. But also there's been some other uh, fantastic um, 
crazy developments where people have made all sorts of fantastic things just by stitching fabric onto paper. But the fabric, the paper used then, um, I'm using the pages from an old children's book, The Beano. It's a, I picked it up from a charity shop. I picked about 10 of them up from a charity shop for next to nothing. And the pages, I use the pages for this kind of thing. Uh, it's just the right thickness. So you don't want it too thin. Another good paper to use is uh, envelopes. The envelopes that bills come in, perfect paper. <laughs> Bank statements, that, that, those envelopes are very good. But back in the day, the, the young uh, lasses who were making uh, patchwork quilts for their, maybe for their bottom drawer for when they got married, they were using whatever paper there was to hand for this part of the process. And, and historians are always really interested in the back of the quilt, not the front so much, although that might be beautiful, but the back of the quilt can have some really interesting social history in there if they were um, receipts uh, from traders or if they were um, a bookkeeping, um, you know, last year's books or letters, uh, love letters. Sometimes uh, maybe uh, girls would make, um, use their love letters to make uh, the patches, the, the paper pieces with. I use this uh, comic book stuff, the Beano, because it's perfect size. I, I don't like it to be slippy I like it to have a bit of a rough texture, perfect size. So one thing to say about cutting the squares is the accuracy here will knock on, uh, they have a knock on effect of the accuracy here. So if, uh, if you're cutting this with scissors or um, you're, not, you're not cutting them when you're concentrating, I use a, um, a modeling knife and a, a steel ruler and I use my green cutting mat, which I'm sitting next to here, to get exactly the right sh size. Then I line them all up and just check. And if any of them are slopey or any of them are smaller or bigger, I'll discard them. Because this, the preparation here, will really pay off in the finished result. Okay, so now we need to get the fabric onto the paper. And uh, people have different ways of doing this. The paper comes out at the end. It doesn't stay in. The paper's just there to give you a, um, to give you your, your shape so that you can take two of these things and stitch them together. And then once they're stitched together, the paper comes out at the end of the project. Not until all six sides are enclosed, but I would always say, leave them in right till the end of the project because it gives the, it gives the work that you're doing some structure. OK, then, so I've said, haven't I, this is two inch squares here and the one on the board behind me that you can see that's made out of all this, these scraps of uh, indigo dyed fabric is an inch and three quarters. It's a, I like that size. It's a tiny bit smaller than this. It doesn't matter. You can choose whatever size square you like. If you want to make this along with me, then between now and the next video, then cut yourself maybe a hundred of these little squares uh, so that um, you're ready to do this dog with me if you want to do it. So the way that I was taught, my mum taught me how to sew the, the squares on to my, um, my, temp my paper templates. So that's the way that I'm going to use. If you want to research another way or if you're already using another way, then please, by all means, do that. But if you're brand new to this, I'm going to be showing you this way. You research some other ways if you like. So no. just a wee word about fabric then. Uh, it doesn't matter what fabric you use, but it should all be the same weight. This is all Liberty fabric, which is very thin. It's Tana Lawn. It's absolutely beautiful fabric. And um, I'm very lucky to have quite a lot of this. So this is Liberty. I'm using this cotton here which is from Merchants and Mills which is about the same weight as this in fact but then you can also use ordinary cotton um, which is a quilter's cotton which is a little bit heavier that's fine as well if you are going to use a different kind of uh, fabric please make sure that it's all the same weight because once you've made the piece and taken the papers out it will wear on evenly if you've got different weights of fabric in there for me so Cotton weight fabric then, 
Uh, I know some people can buy fat quarters and maybe a fat quarter bundle would be a good idea for something like this. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then I'll get back to some cooking videos soon, I promise. <laughs> However, make sure all the weights are the same. So what I'm going to do then, I'm going to put my glasses on because I can't do this thing without my glasses on. So specs on, needle out, and I like to wear a thimble. When I'm working, I always wear a thimble when I'm sewing. And it's a neoprene thimble. It's quite an old one, this now. It's got a metal top to it. And this plasticky, it's neoprene actually, it's not plastic, sticks to your finger so that it doesn't fall off. And it's actually quite comfortable to wear. So comfortable to wear that sometimes if I'm working on a very big job, I remember one time I was driving along thinking, oh, I've still got my thimble on. <laughs> okay then, so I'm going to show you how my mum showed me and how you can do this if you want to. But you can stick or use any other method that you've been taught if you want to as well. Now, I've got my thread in here. I'm going to just tie a knot in the end. I, th I think if you're going to... Um, join along with making one of these how wonderful would that be you could post them on instagram or uh, if you if you are on instagram or facebook i'm less comfortable with facebook i'm not very i don't visit facebook very often so i don't really post to there much but um prudence is over there she's saying what are you doing looking at that dog when you've got a cat here <laughs> it's all right darling don't worry it's a pretend dog uh what was i talking about uh, I can't even remember. I just place the paper on the on the fabric like so and then cut and in this case because there's a nice line on it I'm just going to cut it all the way to the end and when I'm cutting this I need the fabric to be oh, I don't know I'll cut one and show you I used to do it by eye now I need it to be about a quarter of an inch bigger all the way around. That's important. It mustn't be too small so that it's a tiny little edge like that because you'd be struggling to sew that down or stick that down. But it also mustn't be too big either because then it makes the piece very, very bulky. So that's about perfect, that size there. So I'm going to show you this view now. I've just done one whole one, but I forgot to press the camera on, so I'm going to do another one. So there's my square, and here's my needle and thread. Okay, so I'm just going to show you again how to make a knot in the end of your thread here. So I damp my finger just slightly, and then make the thread go all the way around your finger and catch it with your thumb like that. Then roll that off really tightly. Roll the finger and thumb together like that. And then with your ring finger, just get hold of it with the fingernail and pull it back on itself. And there you've got a good enough knot for tacking. So here's my very accurately cut square of paper and my piece of cotton fabric. Just check that, yeah, just check that you've got the right side facing outwards. Okay, I didn't have there. And then it's approximately, it's just a bit more there, but it doesn't actually matter. It's a good quarter of an inch all the way around. And then we're gonna just fold one end over and then just do a tacking stitch through the paper, through the fabric, like so. And the next one, just press that with your finger and thumb, fold it down go through all the layers of fabric and come up the other side so that that's anchored that corner there. Same again, just press it onto the piece like so. Press the bit that sticks out there so you get a nice straight edge there. Fold it over through all the layers of fabric and do one tacking stitch. Now this is the last edge now and there are two corners here so this is ever so slightly uh, trickier but not really and so press that one your finger and thumb down there 
and then fold that end over and completely ignore that one. Just forget about it. Just concentrate on this one. Put your needle through all the layers of fabric and just come up in the middle, just like before. And now just open this end up a bit where it's folded down. Press this end down and press this down here. And then in we go and through all the layers of fabric from the back this time, ever so slightly different. And then do one more stitch on top of that and that's enough to secure it. And there you are, there's one of your pieces. And you need to just keep making those and making those until you've got enough. Okay, remember to turn the camera on that time. <laughs> so that's how to make the squares then. And once you've got all the squares in the size you want, how you want them, then the next thing I'm gonna do is lay them out so that they're in a pleasing way, uh, a, a form that you like. I've got this big design board, but uh, don't worry if you haven't. You can just lay them out on a table. Um, and the best thing to do if you're gonna to have to put it away is to photograph it so that uh, if, you, if you do have to put it away, you can get it out again next time and put it back in the way you like. Now there is a bit of a trick that I'm gonna show you next time to make sure that you've got a good distribution of lights and darks. I'm limited here, I've got about five different designs, so some of them are gonna to have to be repeated. Nothing I can do about that, that's what I've chosen to do. And if you see, I haven't put any of the stripy ones uh, in the body of the dog, because I'm thinking the stripes are gonna go around the outside. So if you want to um, lay your dog out, you could perhaps uh, pause the uh, video so that you can see the shape of that dog. Uh, the, the, the thing to remember is that the long bit where its ear is, there are seven pieces from the top to the bottom. So if you put those seven pieces out first, then you'll, um, you can put, you see, I've got that wrong there. Uh, I'll, I'll notice in a minute that I've actually got that wrong. Yeah, see, yeah, there you are, that needs to go there. I don't know, I must have made hundreds of these dogs hundreds of them. It's not my design. I found it in a magazine when I was in my 20s. So if you're interested in joining in with me here to make this dog, then uh, get all your bits and pieces collected together and um, there'll be another video soon. Thanks for watching.